In this video, we're going to learn how to define a copy constructor in C++. So a copy constructor is a member function of an object that defines how to create the object using another object of the same class. All classes in C++ will automatically have a default copy constructor, but the default copy constructor does what's called a shallow copy of the object. And a shallow copy of the object may cause problems if our objects use dynamically allocated data. In the case of objects that use dynamically allocated data, we're very likely going to want to do what's called a deep copy of the objects. So what exactly are shallow and deep copies, and why do we need a copy constructor? Those are questions we're also going to answer in this video. We'll go over some examples here. The first thing we'll do is create a basic class. We'll say class basic number and basic number objects are going to have a single member variable that's going to be called n and it'll be a public integer. And we'll make a constructor to set n. So we'll say basic number int set n as a parameter and we'll set the n member variable to the value of set n. And then we'll make a basic number object. We'll say basic number num1 and we'll give the constructor the argument 7 to initialize the n member variable to 7 and then we can output the value of the num1 member variable n so we'll say num1 has this value for its n member variable and if we save our program and run it we'll get that num1 is 7. now let's try to make another basic number object and we'll try to initialize it with num1. So here we'll say basic number num2 is equal to num1. So what we're doing here is we're initializing num2 with num1. We never call num2's constructor. So what's going to happen in this case is the default copy constructor is going to run. And what the default copy constructor does is assign the values of the member variables of num1 to the member variables of num2. So in other words, the value of the n member variable of the num1 object is going to be assigned to the n member variable of the num2 object. And if we output num2, we're going to find that its n value is also going to be 7. So here we'll say num2 and num2. And if we save and run this, we'll get that num2 is 7. So basically, the default copy constructor does what's called a member-wise assignment, assigning the values of the member variables of num1 to the member variables of num2. Now, it's possible to override this default behavior by providing our own copy constructor. And the copy constructor looks like this. We say basic number, or whatever the class name is, and then const, and then whatever the class name is, in this case, basic number, and then and, and we give a parameter name here. In this case, I'll just use basic number. And what we can do is use this constant parameter here to initialize this object. So we could then initialize the n member variable of this object to the value of the n member variable of this object here that we're using to initialize our object. So if we save and run this, it's actually gonna have no effect right now because all we're doing is the same thing that the default copy constructor already does, which is assign the value of this object's n member variable to this object's n member variable. But we could do something more interesting Instead of just assigning the number, let's multiply it by two. We'll say two times this other object's n member variable's value. And now if we save and run this, we get num2 has 14 as its n member variable value. So what's going on is that when we assign num1 to num2, the copy constructor is being called. And the copy constructor is being provided num1 as the argument here. 
and we're using it to initialize num2. Now, one thing we should make clear is that the copy constructor is not the same thing as the assignment operation. So let's go over an example. If here I say basic number num3, and I set it to five, and then we have basic number num4, and I set it to 10. If I say num3 is equal to num4, this is a different type of operation than the copy constructor. We're gonna find that the copy constructor is not called in this case. And we could test that out by putting a C out inside the copy constructor. So here I could say C out copy constructor called. And we'll also output the number N followed by N in line. And if we save and run this, we should find the copy constructor is called only once up here. It's not called down here. And that's because this is an assignment operation. The copy constructor is called when one object initializes another object like this. Even though they both look the same in the sense that they both use the equals symbol, these are actually different things. The assignment operation is something we could handle separately in terms of providing our own customized version of how assignment works. But the copy constructor is called when the object is initialized. And that's really why it's called the copy constructor because it has the role of constructing the object. Now the copy constructor could actually be used in a few other places. Like for example, when an object is returned by value from a function, or when an object is passed by value as an argument to a function. So there's certain situations like that where the copy constructor may also be used. Now it's not actually standardized in C++ though that it has to be the case. There's some situations where it may not be used in those cases. So a typical use case for a copy constructor is when a deep copy of the object is required. And that's gonna be when our object has dynamically allocated member variables in the sense that we have member variables that point to data on the heap. So let's go over an example of that. The first thing we'll do is create a new class. So we'll say class number and number objects are gonna have a single public member variable. And this time it's gonna be a pointer to an integer. And the constructor for the number object is gonna dynamically allocate the space for the integer using malloc. So we'll say n is equal to int star malloc size of int. So malloc is gonna allocate space for a single integer. It's gonna return a pointer to that integer. And n is gonna store that memory address. We're then gonna set the value at that memory address to set n by using the dereference operator. So the dereference operator goes and gets that space in memory. And we assign to that space in memory, the value set n. We'll also make a destructor. And the destructor is gonna have to free the dynamically allocated memory so that we don't have a memory leak. So here we'll say squiggly bracket number and then free n to free that dynamically allocated space. And then we'll also make a get function to return the value that n is pointing to. So we'll say int get, and we're gonna return the dereferenced n. So the value that n is pointing to. Now we'll create some number objects and we'll see how the default copy constructor works with these. So here we'll say, number num a eight. And then we'll use the get member function to output the value that num a stores. So we'll say num a dot get followed by an end line and we'll save and run our program. And we get that num a is eight. So how is the copy constructor gonna work in this case? Let's try to create another object 
and we'll initialize it using num a. So we'll say number num b is equal to num a. And when we do this, it's going to use the default copy constructor to have num b initialized using num a. Let's output num b to see what we get here. And I'm actually going to throw in one more thing here temporarily. I'm going to say exit zero. But for now, let's just save run this and we'll just focus on what num b is going to be. So we'll save it, run it, and we get num b is eight. And it looks like everything is okay. It looks like similar to as before, num b has been initialized using num a. The problem is we have a shallow copy going on and num a uses dynamically allocated data. When the shallow copy occurs, what happens is the value of the member variables of num a get assigned to the member variables of num b. So in the case of this pointer n, the memory address stored by n gets assigned to the n member variable of num b. That's a problem because now both num a and num b are storing the same pointer memory address. In other words, they're both pointing to the same value on the heap, the same integer on the heap. Space for that integer was allocated once when num a was created. Num b has its member variable n set to that same memory address. That's why if we save and run it, we get num b is eight because the pointer member variable n that both num a and num b have are both storing the same memory address for that same eight value on the heap. Now we're gonna notice this is a problem when we try to do something like this. If I say here, star num a dot n is equal to 20. So here what I'm doing is I'm dereferencing the member variable n of the num a object, which allows me to access that value in memory. And I'm setting it equal to 20. Now, after I do this, if I output num b and num a again, we're gonna find that both values have been changed to 20. And the reason why that is the case is because they both store the same memory address in N. And when I dereference the num a objects N member variable, and I go and change the value stored at that memory address to 20, then that's also gonna affect num b because num b is pointing to that same value in memory. The other problem we've got is if the main function does a return zero to terminate our program, we're actually gonna have an error. That's why I put in this exit here to exit in a different way earlier. If I take out this exit and I save and run the program, we're gonna have a pretty concerning error here. Our program crashes. And what's going on is that if the main function terminates the program by running the return zero statement, the destructor for num a and the destructor for num b are both gonna be called. Now the destructor for num a is gonna run and it's gonna free the dynamically allocated memory. But then the destructor for num b is gonna run and it's gonna to try to free the same dynamically allocated memory that's already been freed. And that's why we get this failure here. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is something smarter than this. We're gonna to wanna to do a deep copy of the object instead of a shallow copy of the object when the copy constructor runs. So let's create the deep copy version now. Up here, we'll have 
number, const, number, and, and then we'll call it other number. And what we're going to do is dynamically allocate space for the number that this number object is going to refer to. So now we're going to have two dynamically allocated spaces in memory, one for each object. And then we're going to copy the value that the other object is storing in its dynamically allocated memory into this object's dynamically allocated memory. So we'll say here, n is equal to int star malloc size of int. And we'll dynamically allocate space for the integer. Then we'll dereference n and we'll set it to star other number dot n. So what we're doing here is dereferencing the other number objects n member variable. And we're going to go get the value stored at that memory address that n stores. And we're going to take that value and we're going to store it into the memory address that this object's member variable n stores. So we'll try this. We'll save this, run it. And we now get num a is 20 and num b is still 8. And that's because we're now doing a deep copy of the object by implementing our own copy constructor that duplicates not just the things on the stack, but also the things on the heap by dynamically allocating additional space for those things and transferring the values over. So this is how we can create and use the copy constructor in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.